I'm Justin Mary, and I'm here on behalf of a group of eight faculty who met in an online discussion about teaching behavior online. This talk is one of two on how to transition behavior courses into an online format. Our talk focuses on course design, lectures, and discussions. The next talk focuses on assignments and laboratories. Consider these primers. There are positives about our pandemic-necessitated transition to online, including the chance to experiment with new pedagogies, uh, inviting colleagues from across the globe as guest speakers, sharing resources, and increasing inclusion and access among our students. Animal behavior is a field that is amenable to an online format. It is inherently engaging, there are abundant resources available, and it is possible to do meaningful field studies with backyard animals and minimal specialized equipment. We encourage you to employ the principle of backwards design, as it forces us to keep our courses focused on our goals, making it easier to decide what content, activities, or assessments to include. Online courses need clear, predictable organization. Making a course map, like the example that's shown here, can help build tight organization and predictable routine into your course. Again, you start with your course goals, and let these drive your groupings of learning assignments, your assessments, and finally your activities. Course content may be delivered synchronously or asynchronously. Synchronous delivery is advantageous in facilitating interactions. Nevertheless, asynchronous delivery does increase flexibility for students and is less likely to be compromised by technical problems, which may be more likely to negatively affect economically disadvantaged students. You can blend both approaches in your course to maximize the benefits of each. Engagement and a sense of belonging may be particular challenges for students from historically underrepresented groups. Be intentional about inclusivity and engagement in online courses. Be cognizant of bias in both the researchers and the science emphasized in your class and work to highlight the work of underrepresented scientists. Do all of your sexual selection examples feature choosy females and aggressive males? Is parental care a female enterprise except in so-called sex role reversed species? Can we directly address scientists who were racist, homophobic, or misogynistic and how that impacted their science? Recent papers by Harris and colleagues and by Lee are good places to start. Please also be aware of inclusivity and access. If you hold synchronous classes, record them and post them and devise ways for students who must participate asynchronously to have equivalent learning experiences. Include closed captioning and transcripts in your videos and be flexible about requiring cameras and consider allowing the use of pseudonyms during student interactions. Short, digestible video lectures can help students identify key concepts. Make it engaging by showing yourself on camera at times and using annotation tools to mimic board work. As shown here, you can also intersperse text, readings, recorded behavior videos, activities, and questions with your own short lecture videos in your learning management system to guide students through the material. Use engagement activities intentionally to create a sense of community. Occasional interactive synchronous sessions can be nice additions to an otherwise asynchronous course. Have students work through interrupted case studies, discuss primary literature, or work together in breakout rooms to devise hypotheses and design experiments for video recordings of behavior. It is possible to replicate this engagement in asynchronous courses through creative use of your learning management systems discussion board as well as third-party software packages. Here are a few software options that we use to share short videos and have face-to-face -face discussions in an asynchronous setting, to provide informal gamified quizzes, to allow students to drop ideas into post-it note boards for discussion, and to collaborate by socially annotating articles. Whether you run a discussion on your learning management system's discussion board or with other software, a good prompt is often the key. Sometimes simple prompts can be the most effective. After a reading, for example, you could ask students what made them wonder, or identify two strengths and two weaknesses of a study, or discuss the data collection or the ethics of it. Here's an example of a simple prompt for a first day activity that asks students to present a behavior factoid that they already know. Consider offering points for participation and subdividing students into groups to avoid redundancy. Try to serve as a moderator and a facilitator only as needed. Frequent posts on your part might actually squelch student participation. A summary post with your discussion reactions often will help students find good takeaways. Online testing is a big concern for many faculty. 
Due to concerns with privacy and equity, we do not encourage using online proctoring software. Instead, consider lowering the stakes by using shorter and more frequent quizzes to reduce feelings of desperation. Use a variety of question types and focus on higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Be flexible for when students must take the exams and how much time they have to complete them. Finally, consider that taking an exam is a very different activity than anything that most professionals do in their day-to-day -day work. Alternative forms of assessment like papers, short essays, and reflections can be powerful learning experiences and are more authentic demonstrations of discipline skill sets than traditional exams. Our sister presentation on laboratories and assignments may be helpful in this regard. You can find that talk in the same session as this one. Uh, please also look for our manuscript on BioArchive. Thank you on behalf of our team for watching, and we look forward to talking with you in our Q&A session.